Hi, my name is Patrice and welcome to the Golden Helix Guild YouTube channel. Today we have with us Nancy Allen who is at Unicorn Meadow Farm. She does Reiki, crystal healing, multi-dimensional healing, vibrational healing with Tibetan bowls, um, access consciousness bars, and we're really pleased to have you with us today. Thank you. Oh, thanks for having me here. Now, something in your website that I thought was very important and interesting was that you feel, let me see if I can read this, simply a channel for divine energy who has learned a variety of means to deliver that energy. So, do you feel it is better for people to have a lot of tools in their toolbox and a lot of different methods? It depends on the person. It depends on what they want. Um, yeah. Everybody can do energy. Energy is not from me. It's not from you. It's, it's from the universe. It's from God. Whatever you want to believe. Um, it really depends on what you're comfortable with delivering it with and what your clients need. It's like, I have three cars. Okay. I have two different cars and I have a truck. There are times when I use the car for things, there are times I use the truck. It depends on the situation, what I use. And it's the same with energy. So would you recommend that someone learn a lot of different modalities? Sure can hurt, and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's it's because each one opens a new doorway. Each one is a, is a little bit different, and it opens a pathway to something else. Um, but it, again, it's your choice. You know, if you're comfortable um, having oatmeal every morning for breakfast, then fine. If you want some variety, then go get some variety. For myself, I know that I gave a talk at a national kinesiology conference about beyond technique, mm -hmm. where you can take something in as the structure and then move beyond it. Yeah. Because you have integrated in yourself and like, activated memory of how to do it. Now, for, my, for me, I know that I've learned many different types of... Uh, modalities, but I don't know that I could remember one as far as its absolute technique. Yeah, I, I meld a lot of stuff together. It, it depends on, on, and I never know. I don't know until I start exactly what I'm going to use because it's not me that's doing it. I ask your guides and, and my guides and they direct me wonder what to use. I might use everything in one session. I might use one thing in one session. Um, I might use just hands, just energy, and stay in one place. Or I might go over your whole body. Um, and every time you come get on my table it will be something different because you need something different every time. So I know when I got started with energy work, the uh, learning the different techniques, someone would say, oh, go learn Reiki because they do what you do, but they have a name for it. Because mm -hmm. I was, I just came in that way. Did you come in a healer? Did you always know you had this ability? No, not that I remember. Um, there are things that I remember from my childhood, but there are certain things that I've studied that just come natural. It's like I'm remembering them. And there's certain things that I have to really study because it's, it's obviously very new to me. Um, or it's so far back in my memory, in past lives, that I have trouble bringing it back up. Um, but uh, as far as always doing energy work, I was always uh, an odd child. 
Well, you may be glad to know that the odd child of yesterday is the more common person of today. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> A lot more fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, in what ways were you unique? <laughs> uh, well, one thing was, was the crystals and the rocks. I always had a pocket full of rocks, but, you know, it, they passed that off as me being a tomboy. And, um, my mother always had a pile of rocks when she did laundry that she threw back out in the driveway and I had to go recollect them, but uh, they held a power for me, not a, a love, not a power. Um, I always loved rocks, crystals. Um, animals, I, I could, they used to say I could gentle an animal with just a look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, astral travel. I was the only kid I think ever that used to love to go to bed. My mother used to say I never saw a child so easy to put to bed because I loved to go to bed because then I'd go traveling you know? um, and I'd visit the the uh, barn and I'd visit the the apple orchard, all the places I couldn't go when I was on the earth. You know? As by a myself, child. by myself, uh, go all over my my neighbor's garden. It was a big commercial garden, so it was like acres. Watch the animals, watch the birds. So you just grew up this way. Yeah, yeah. And I had special friends. I had one in particular, Francine, that used to drive my mother crazy. <laughs> So she saw her too? No, no, <laughs> she didn't see her. <laughs> and how did she? How did she drive her crazy? Well, things like you know, one time we got went to get in the car, and and my mother put me in the back seat and closed the door, and I started screaming bloody murder because she didn't give Francine time to get all the way in, and she closed Francine's leg in the door. So my mother had to open the door and wait for Francine to get all the way in, and she was very understanding, you know, but it was. You know, a child's imagination that wasn't real to her, but it was very real to me. Newsflash, I think it was you driving her crazy, not Francine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so you just grew up this way and it, it um, began to, you just began to study more or what was the no, actually, in I, your I, life? I, pulled away from it more and more as I got older. Why is that? Um, life, you know. Um, uh, paying bills and being responsible and not being foolish as the father says. And uh, being an adult, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. you know? And then a, a wonderful, wonderful teacher came into my life. A marvelous teacher. And her name was Zoe. And she got very, very ill. And she was dying. And I was getting ready to say goodbye to her. Now, who's Zoe? Zoe was a dog. Oh, okay. Um, and she, I was getting ready. The next day, we had decided to bring her down to the vet and put her on IV just to keep her alive so they could keep doing tests and find out. They had done test after test after test to find out what was wrong with her and then they couldn't find it. And she was dying. She was literally dying before my eyes. And uh, she was dropping weight. She was 136 pounds normal weight and she had gotten down to 72 pounds. And uh, it was a very, very sad time. But I had seen about psychic healers and animal communicators and I went online and I looked up Penelope Smith who was a very famous animal communicator and healer and uh, her, one of her students was right here in Simsbury, in Natalie Tells and I called her and in the middle of the night my dear woman Instead of making an appointment, she just went right in and started talking with Zoe. And when 
into Zoe became, and I'm probably not explaining it right, because it was very long ago, um, but she went in and felt what Zoe was feeling. And she, it was in her digestive system, and it was funny because I said, yeah, right, but she's not processing food, of course, it's her digestive system, and it's, it's probably just a load of crap. <laughs> And she said, pinpointed some things, and then she referred me to somebody else um, who was a, a Chinese herbalist. And she said, uh -huh. she, this is what she needs. And I called that woman the next day, and we didn't take Zoe down to the vet. We started that, and we started a regimen of, of just pure food, no, just potato, nothing else, no processed food, no nothing. And within three days, she was starting to turn around. Three days? Within three days. It took about three months to get her back on, key, on you know, healthy, really healthy. But it saved her life. That three months is quick. Yeah, yeah. Well, three days is, is <laughs> I mean, to see a difference when a dog is, you know, dying in three days to know that, you know, she's making a turnaround and a good one. So that started me on that. That made a believer. Yeah. So, and I did a lot of research on nutrition and on food. I did, I, I went and took uh, an animal communication class with Netta. I took uh, Reiki with uh, Dory Dzinski. Um And I just was off. It was like everything that I saw was like I was a kid in a candy shop. <gasps> I love that. I'm gonna try that. Look at that, and I, and, and I just I, and Zoe was the one that, that started. Luckily, she didn't have to almost die to get me into the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so when was that? Oh my God, when was that? That was in 2000. Yeah, 2000. And I believe I met Zoe, so how long did she live then? Zoe was 13 years old when she died. Finally, from other complications, she had some major back injury, which Netta also helped me with. Um, so she passed in 2013? Yeah. yeah, December. December 20th, 2013, two days before our um, survivor's breakfast <laughs> at the farm. <laughs> well, that's new meaning to the word survivor. Yeah. yeah. So you're on a farm. Yes. Again, back on the farm. Back on the farm, and it is wonderful. Unicorn Meadow Farm. Unicorn Meadow Farm in Southfield. And uh, it's a marvelous, marvelous place. It's a place that um, Jackie Lenko and I co-own it. And um, what our intent with the farm is, we have a lot of people that come and do things such as yourself. Uh, we have things going on all the time if you go to the website, uh, unicornmeadowfarm.com. There's all kinds of stuff going on. But what our intent is, is to create community. Um, to give people such as yourself um, a platform to present mm -hmm. their things and for people to come uh, explore themselves and explore things like I've been exploring for the last 13 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's also the energy there is just, it's building, it's building. We had a woman stop in because every time she drove by, she gets tingly, so she had to stop. <laughs> and she, she finally got up the bravery to stop and knock on the door. She said, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> Send me away. And uh, now she's coming regular to some things. Well, I know you have a labyrinth in the front. Yep, a beautiful labyrinth. It's a small labyrinth, but it's beautiful. It's, it's um. Most labyrinths are made the traditional ways from west to east, from death to birth. And there's also another traditional that's less known, and it's called the magic, magical. 
and it goes from north to south. And north is magic, south is power. It goes from magic to power mm -hmm. and back. And it's a really cool labyrinth. As we were building it, we could feel the energy of it. Um, and it's right by the road. And you know our road, there's quite a bit of traffic. But you get in that labyrinth, you don't even hear it. You don't even notice it. We've had people stop that don't even know about this stuff and say, what is that? And we'll tell them. And we'll say, you can walk it. And we show them how to walk it. <laughs> Which is really cool. Really cool. And in the back acreage, you have a beautiful pond yep. and medicine wheel. Yep, and medicine wheel that, that Lynn Hart will help me build. Uh, and again, that the, all the, the energy in that, the, the power in that. Uh, we, didn't even, we only had the rocks, the four directions laid. And as we stepped inside the area that we were going to build, we hadn't even built it yet. We could feel the energy shift. It's beautiful. And there's trails. There's a place back there that Mary back had, um, has named the Psychic Elevator because of the way she feels the energy when she stands there, just kind of down. Everybody feels a little different there. Um, it's an amazing place, and it's building. Because we have so many good people with such good energy coming, and it's building it. And as you, as you, with anything, as you acknowledge it, as you accept it, and you acknowledge it, and you thank it, it grows. And that's what's happening there. Yes. And you open your place up to so many people. If they look on your website, unicornmeadows.com. They'll see a lot of events happening, and mm -hmm. they should check back often because you're constantly adding more, adding more yeah. things. Yeah. It's Unicorn Meadow Farm. What did I say? Com. Unicorn Meadows. Oops. It's okay. Unicorn Meadow Farm. <laughs> com. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah. And in another part of your life, you do dog training. Yeah, that's another love of my life. And it's not, not so much dog training as it is team building. And somebody said that to me the other day, and I liked it. And it's it's a team of two species, which is really cool. It's really hard hard sometimes to to get where I want to go with them. But, um, so I can't just drop off my dog and say, fix him? No. <laughs> no. Actually, I had a chance to do that, and I thought it would be really good. Uh -huh. And it would have made a lot of money for me. Uh, people dropped their dogs off at a training center that, that tells you in the place that I work, uh, that I do training out of. And uh, training dogs, and I thought it would be a lot easier, and it would be a lot more money. And I didn't like it. I quit after a month. I didn't like it. Because the human part was missing. The... The... Reward, I guess you could say, for me, is to watch the communication start to develop between the two and for them to become a team. And when, I, when part of the team is missing, it's oh, this one. It objectifies the dog. Yeah. 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 Now, I also know you have another endeavor going on there with energy work. And yep. dogs and owners. Mm -hmm. Yep. Jackie, too, and I uh, at Tales You In in Manchester. We're um, doing dogs and people together, which is a lot of fun. The people have a lot of fun with it. Uh, you go on the table, and a dog leg goes down on the bed with Jackie, and um, we do energy together on you. And it's, it's really it's amazing. Uh, I've wanted, it's so amazing that I've wanted to film Jackie doing it, but she doesn't want to, and i got to respect Not yet. That. Yeah. Um, because sometimes in watching how the dog is responding is just mesmerizing, and I forget what I'm doing, and I have to go back. <laughs> so are you kind of 
balancing the energies between the two or is there any intention? Just by you being, it's, it's the same as, you know, when you do a healing on somebody, you're getting healing too. If I did a healing on somebody and, and somebody else was in the room, they would benefit just from that. It wouldn't be as powerful for them because mm -hmm. yeah, it's not as directed. But uh, for lack of a better term, they get someone to follow up. So what we can do, we can do just the person and the dog will get benefit from that. And quite often when we first start with a dog, because they're not real sure what's going on, uh, we will both work on the person and just let the dog kind of start feeling the energy. And then when you see the dog start to relax, then Jackie will get down on the floor and, and, and invite the dog to work with her. Um, and usually, if a dog doesn't accept the invitation on the first session, they will by the second. And it's just, it's so... Like, we had this one Border Collie that was like climbing the walls. And to watch that dog just kind of settle down and then come over. And Jackie had her hands like this. And the dog comes over and lays her head in Jackie's hands and just looks at Jackie. It was just, it's making me teary eyed to remember it because it was just so, that was the most awesome one. Uh, the people enjoy it, the dogs enjoy it, I enjoy it, Jackie enjoys it, I think. Pretty sure she does. So you're getting to express all your childhood loves? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm being a kid again. Thank you. So we invite you to check out her website. Unicorn Meadow Farm dot com and is it Tails You Win? Tails You Win Dog Training Center in Manchester, yeah. Great training place, there's a lot going on there, but um, we do the energy sessions there on Tuesdays and Fridays by appointment. Okay. Check it out. Thank you for joining us.